Heavenly Father, we come to you in this hour, asking for your guidance and protection to our virtual gathering today. We thank you for the gift of life, the gift of family, the gift of work, and the gift of friendship. We thank you for this great opportunity to bring us together in this session as brothers and sisters. Bless the committee, the facilitator, and the attendees of this gathering. May we continue to value and appreciate the true essence and meaning of life with the help of your grace. And as we go along to our discussion today, we humbly pray that you would deepen our understanding. Lord, enlighten us and give us wisdom every day. Forgive us for our shortcomings and remind us to always be mindful of the things we do in life. We offer our life and our decisions to you, O Lord. May this gathering today create a memorable experience and a fruitful outcome. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and our Savior. Amen. Welcome everyone and good morning. Kumusta? I hope we are all okay at our own individual workplaces. And uh, I hope we are all okay. No? Um, um, I would like to welcome our colleagues from different institutions. Maayong um, aga from our friends and colleagues in the academe. Uh, in Iloilo City. And uh, of course, I would like to welcome our colleagues uh, from Siliman University. Thank you for joining us and our neighboring schools, um, Negros Oriental State University. Um, hi to Sir Jason and um, good morning also Sir Mark, that's from Baiso Bilar. Sir Candido, hi sir, good morning. And to Ma'am um, Donata, hi Ma'am, good morning. Long time no see everyone, but uh, we are so happy to have you again. Um, in the past year, we have we are challenged no, on using our learning management uh, system as one of our platform to deliver our online distance learning. Pass forward for semester, second semester, and I believe you will agree with me that we are also challenged um, on how to maintain and how to retain engagement and participation among our students in our classroom, both asynchronous and synchronous discussion. And that is really true. Our research shows that student engagement or teachers are challenged in maintaining engagement in the class. Sometimes we are talking in the synchronous video, live video session, and we feel that many teachers feel that um, they are alone. Students are just switching on their Zoom account, and then they feel that they are not on their desk or sometimes they are preparing or investing so much time in, prepare, uh, in preparing their learning content, but they feel that students are not reading their content. We conducted also a separate study, and this is more on the engagement among students. And there is also an affirmation from the students. Our results shows that students are moderately not engage, are engaged and there is a room or there is a certain level of disengagement to the content, to the teacher and some other variables when we talk about classroom engagement. For the past days in our upskilling, we highlighted student engagement or our main objective of our upskilling program for June and July is increasing student engagement in the classroom. We found out also in our research that 
students, learners in an online distance learning are more inclined, interested, and learning using or gamifying the classroom increases student participation and engagement in the classroom. Today, this morning, I will talk about gamifying our classroom and that is basically the main intention is getting the engagement or or uh, making or or um, gamifying our classroom because we wanted to get the attention we wanted to increase participation to our students in both synchronous and asynchronous let me share my slide so that i can start discussing um, the material. My discussion this morning is divided into two. The first half, I will be talking about the basics of gamifying the classroom. And the second part towards the end is, let's do an actual um, um, playing of a game-based learning type of content that we develop at Seoul office. My colleague Jade Montimayor will be chatting you individually via private message. Um, he will be giving you your login details. That means uh, your username and your password. And uh, please skip it because towards or, or half of the session, I will be giving instruction on how to download our apps no? so that we can do a first hand this is actually a sort of um, a, a, a soft launching of the software or of the mobile app that we develop as part of our uh, funded project by the United Board for Christian Higher Education. So let me share my screen and so that I can start my discussion. I'm sharing now my screen. And I hope you can see the slide, not the, the presentation, not the notes. Please confirm, Sir Steve, if my slide is visible. Yes, thank uh, you. Yes, sir, visible. Thank you. Okay, so gamifying your classroom. And when we talk about gamifying our classroom, there are two major concepts in educational technology that we should know okay but before that let me um brainwash you first why we have to gamify our class our virtual classroom in particular especially this time why do we have to do this um research shows that it boosts enthusiasm among our learners and my colleague, our team in the Seoul office can really attest when we did our testing of a first app that we developed um, two years ago uh, on a learning trail. We feel and we, we observe that students are more enthusiastic to learn the topic, you know, to learn the topic because um, they enjoy, they are, they are having fun when, while they learn a particular topic. It lessens disruptive behavior. I am sure you experience like, especially when you do synchronous learning and then you teacher talking and talking and you don't know anymore if your students are listening or um, if naka-on man gani ang video, uh, you are disrupted with you know, their positions, their behavior on screen. Um, I, we, we even he, uh, heard a, a sharing that uh, um, one teacher, when, when she does a, a live session, she has, to, she has to switch off, disable the chat because students are misbehaving and etc. The other is it increases uh, cognitive growth. Uh, it encourages growth and development because they learn out from it. They are excited. They are looking forward for the next level and so on and so forth. And it improves attention span. If we have a problem like uh, 
um, we we heard so many sentiments like we we uh, we almost have a sleepless night but when we look at the logs of our virtual classroom the students are not even downloading it the students are not even uh, viewing it or when they when when they are on our live session they are when i ask them orally they don't participate and that's basically on attention there is a decline of the attention span all of this there are many significant benefits in the gamifying or gamifying our classroom and all of this boils down to student engagement um, student engagement this is a powerful objective in any kind not just simply on the odl but for sure we even experienced before covid student disengagement in a face-to-face -face class how much more in an online distance learning and that is our objective gamifying the class we can show proof to you dear colleagues in the academy that gamification gam game-based learning are more effective than having the usual oral lecture discussion of a topic let me share with you the research the research that uh, we did um, just to highlight that this makes um, this uh, the app that we developed um, two years ago and we tested it uh, in partnership with Hong Kong Baptist University. Um, the app makes learning a particular topic more interesting. During this time, uh, a topic was um, um, the role of or, or the uh, social responsible use of social media. So instead of me discussing what is responsible use of social media, we translated it into a trail, into a game app, into a mobile app. And you can see the result that it is it has it has reached or it yields a certain level of a effective uh, effectiveness. Um, the result of our study also shows that um there are satisfactory and positive uh, features highlighting on the learning satisfaction positive exciting experience technology trail activity fun no interesting these are the words that are actually coming from um from the experience of the students learning a particular content through a game-based learning uh, some of the benefits when we ask them uh, with our respondents, um, if you can see um, all of the statements there, they rated and um, they highly agree. Uh, this implies that the students, no, the students see really the benefits of having uh, of, of um, gamifying our classroom, in particular the gamification. I am talking here gamification, but what's really gamification? No? So let's try, as, as I mentioned to you, when we gamify our classroom, there are two important concepts that we should know. One is the gamification. And what is gamification? Gamification is, um, it is a strategy that employs game mechanics, mechanics, techniques, uh, and theory in areas that traditionally do not function as a game. So that is basically the game part. Uh, employ game mechanics, techniques, and theory in areas that traditionally do not function as a game. Because gamification is a teaching strategy, there is a separate description or another description of gamification in the lens of an educator. It is a teaching strategy that translates content and delivery into a game. So that means instead of preparing just simply our PowerPoint and then pre-recorded na bugs kasi walang tulog overnight because of that, uh, that pre-recorded lecture, when you posted it in your virtual classroom, no one reads or no one even dare to view your slides. Why? Because especially if the pre-recorded video is over two hours, one hour, and it's so boring, monotonous, only the teacher talking, and etc. And delivery. 
So uh, we have to do Zoom because uh, we need to deliver all the content as prescribed by our syllabus. Otherwise, we will be uh, there will be a failure in terms of delivery, and the students would learn and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So naghahabol si teacher. With this content, both content, we can gamify the content. Delivery instead of just a purely lecture. Let's just do that in a game way. Okay, that is gamification. In gamification, there are basic concepts. In the education part, you should be able to go back to your learning goals, no? to the goal of the subject in particular. You should look at the learning outcomes, which part in the learning outcome that can be translated either the content or the delivery into a game or a gamification aspect and then look at the skill what skill you would want to develop again it's more again of the recalibration of our syllabus and then consider the achievement okay after playing the game what the students will get okay what the students will get but actually based on our based on our research of uh, during the first uh, app that we developed Students did not mind actually on the achievement. They just enjoyed, you know, uh, competing with each other and then uh, rushing, go to the next level and so on and so forth without minding actually the result. That's based on the sharing. Let's go to the second half of the gamification concept, which is the game part. So in the gamification, there should be challenge. There should be reward. There should be competition. And there should be a clear how the player will engage to the game. There should be clear instruction on how the student should participate or interact with the application. No? So goal, learning, skill, achievement, that is granted because that is the education component. Now, uh, add um, additional to that minimum requirements in in content and delivery is the, the, the game part, which is challenge, the challenges, the reward, the competition, and the user engagement. Oh, by the way, if you have questions, uh, please feel free to type in the chat box. You don't need to wait for the Q&A so that it could be better. And then we can, um, we can respond immediately to your inquiry. OK, now, because because gamification is a broad concept, um, there are, for sure, right now you are. It's it it's playing in your mind that how can I gamify if I'm teaching, if I'm teaching uh, computer programming? Oh, we can do that. Or most common issue is well, I'm teaching philosophy, or I'm teaching a hard science, or I am teaching a mathematics, I'm teaching accounting, and so on and so forth. There are two types, there are two major types of gamification. The first one is the so-called structural. What is a structural gamification? It involves applying game elements to move a learner through content with no changes or alterations to the content itself. And the focus actually of this game is to get the learner, the students, motivated to work through the content, keeping them engaged by offering reward. Paano kaya, no? How can we do this? Let's say, for example, uh, some example of this is to earn points for watching an instructional video or completing an assignment in which the video or assignment had no other elements of game other than offering of points. Yes, that is already gamification by, by just simply saying, um, in your slides, in between your slides, I, I, I did this. In my slides, within my slides, one of the slides there, I will go to, uh, I have an announcement. Open this link and message to me one word coming from this website. That is just to make sure that the students are engaged to the content. That is one way for me to validate ah, my students are reading and they uh, go up to the 13th slide because they were able to read 
the link that I gave to them. It's something like that. It's just giving reward. It's called structural. Um, it's not really like they are really, you are having a game up. It's not like that. Just to give you more ways on how to do this, for structural, you can do like points. Learners, students earn points for doing, doing specific tasks like watching a video or completing an assignment. Um, in our learning management system, like let's say, for example, if you have, if you wish to give additional points for those who can give or who can submit uh, on time, you can do that. No? What else? Budgets. Uh, this would be awarded to players as they reach um, certain goals. Um, there will be a separate training to this. Oh, by the way, uh, many of my discussions are 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 are, uh, high, are highlights, and there are specific training if you go to the specific skill that you wanted to learn from this. Achievements similar to budgets. Achievements are earned as learners work through various tasks and goals assigned to them. You can also do some like levels. Like as players move through the content, uh, it continues to build on the previous um, concepts. I will demonstrate later how to do this. Or you can also do uh, leaderboards, like the ranking of learners and their achievements is displayed on a leaderboard. And another one is the social element as learners see what their co-players are achieving or possibly struggling with, they are encouraged to help each other. And, and there is a so-called now in hybrid learning, uh, a so-called pedagogy called social learning uh, is a key success factor and it can be reinforced through like training or formative um, assessment among our students. So that is the structural. There is no modification of the content. Let's say, for example, you are discussing about carpal tunnel. So instead you discussing the lecture taken from the book, making a PowerPoint, and then discussing. All you have to do is something like, if you have a pre-recorded video, you posted it there, and then maybe you can say, uh, for those who can download the video within the span of time, I'll give five points, or something like that. No, So it's, it's only the structure, it is only the mechanism on, so that they will be encouraged um, to perform the reading, to perform the assessment, uh, because they can get achievements or they can get rewards that will lead them to a better achievement in the class. That is called structural. The other one is the so-called content gamification. The content itself is altered to make it more game-like. Altered in the sense like it will not change the it will not change the meaning and the description. Um, al alteration here like you can you can in, you can you can incorporate like fantasy or you can you can incorporate what's this uh, superheroes um, characters you can incorporate uh, all other uh, hobbies, as long as the content itself, the meaning itself will not be changed. And it still does not turn the content into a game, but rather adds games or activities to the content. That's gamification. Uh, an example to this is um, starting a course with a fun challenge to grab the learner's attention as opposed to starting right off with a list of learning objectives. Another example is to add story elements as part of the content. So uh, in, inside your content, there are gamification, there are things that um, you try to, to simulate like a game so that again, students would be more interested to either access to the content or more engaged to both synchronous and asynchronous form of uh, assessment, formative and the summative um, assessment. Uh, for the content, the focus is basically to increase user engagement by uh, attaching interactive 
elements into your content. Later on, again, I'll give some examples. So that you can visualize, there are tons of examples of gamification in the classroom. We can actually go to gamify.uk slash um, user types gamification mechanics element. I will stop my sharing so that I can type on the chat box uh, on the chat box the link that I would want you to go and so that also I can um, demonstrate I can demonstrate it to you and show on my screen the different and the many gay uh, gamification examples. So I'll be going to this link with uh, uh, that that I uh, chatted on the chat box and I will open it and share it with you in a few moments. So this one, screen two, gamified. If you can see, if you can see here, so this is a, a collection of 52 gamification mechanics and elements. You just choose. It's like a menu for you, a menu for you to, to choose and what, what is more appropriate and applicable into your topic, into your class or into your course. So general onboarding tutorial, sign posting, loss aversion, progress feedback, theme, narrative story, curiosity, mystery box, even mystery box. Why do people on Lazada, they know already that it's not sure what to buy. Why they are <laughs> keep on buying that mystery box? Because there is excitement, there is curiosity, and it's a strong force to learn <laughs> accordingly. Time pressure, scarcity, strategy, flow, consequences, investment. Uh, when you talk about schedule related, you can do random rewards. You can do fixed reward schedule, time dependent reward. The one I mentioned to you, like if you can submit three days before the schedule, before the deadline, then I'll give you uh, two, uh, two points, additional two points. Or if you will submit on, on the day, uh, there's no additional point. So students would be more interested no, to, to submit it before the time because they would know that there is additional points into that. Socializer, um, guild, team, social network, social status, discovery, pressure, competition. In terms of uh, free, they call it free spirit uh, category, exploration, branching, Easter egg, unlockable, uh, creativity tools, customization, and another category is on achiever, and so on and so forth. There's a lot. I wanted you to go into that and then I wanted you to rethink, no? To rethink on how you can gamify either your content or your delivery. No, either your content or your delivery. There's a lot here that you can do gamification. You can even do some gamification of your periodic table, game elements, no? Uh, because these are interactive like this. And then if you will look that and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's one of the example. Uh, I, oh, sorry. I posted, I think, yes. Okay, so that's the, that's the link. And uh, let me go back to my screen. And I will show you a very specific example that I did in my class. Share screen, oh, where is it? Okay, here, share screen, there you go. Okay, so just to give you an example, some examples that I, that I tried, let me, let me change just for a second. And then effects one by one. Okay. And then animation. I just have to modify my animation. There you go. And share screen. I hope you can see my slideshow now. So some examples that uh, we tried during video session, how, um, what we can do, no? how we can apply gamification, what I did 
uh, just just to give you some illustration and example because uh, for sure it's it's difficult also to imagine how gamification would look like um, during video session like for example at the start you can do or you can incorporate gamification into like this like at the start you can do that at the first quarter, perhaps of your the entire duration. So let's say, for example, if your if your asynchronous video time live session is one hour, so perhaps in in the next fifteen minutes you will incorporate gamification. You then in the thirty minutes you can incorporate, which is in the middle, you can incorporate another gamification, and you can do also a gamification at the end of your class. So just an example, just an example at the start, visualize goal settings by asking open-ended questions using poll everywhere. Diba, the ideally before we will do our lecture, we will, we will tell or we will ask our students perhaps a summary or a review of the previous one and what they expect to learn what they expect to learn in the class for that particular session. For sure, you did that in your video conference room or in your video session. But perhaps we are challenged, nga, ah, we, we already skipped that one, sir, because no one will participate. All of them will say, no video, ma'am, our mic is problematic, and so on and so forth, because they don't participate orally. No, they don't participate orally. But um, I made an observation that if I do, if I ask my students orally, it's so silent. But if I will share a link for them to type, there is like a gap. But once the student, a student will submit and they can see their answers on the screen, then students will be excited to participate also. Just to give you an example. Say, for example, this one. Uh, at poll everywhere. Let me stop my screen. The poll everywhere is this one. And I wanted you to go into this. And this is activated already. And I wanted you to try this one. Okay. On the screen, I usually do this in my class. How are you feeling today? Okay. To respond, I want you to go to polev.com slash Dave Marshall 107. Never mind the text. Okay, it's it will deduct to your load. <laughs> it's actually via the US. Never mind the text. Just go to polev.com slash Dave Marshall 107. And please answer my question. How are you feeling today? It's an open-ended question, just to, you know, just to tell the students that you are concerned also with them, especially this time, especially this time of pandemic where um, students uh, felt that uh, they are alone. Oh, it's amazing. No? It's nice to see a response into that. I said this, that students can do anonymous no? um, because um, students sometimes feel that, um, especially about feelings and, and experience, they don't want to share also. But in your logs, actually, you can look at their, their uh, details. In, in your own log, in your account, I mean. How are you feeling today? I hope you can access it and you can experience um, visualizing your open-ended questions before the start of the class. Excited, yes. Thank you for those who answered. What is good into this is if there are two or more the same um, text inputted to poll everywhere, it will not double, but instead the text will be enlarged or increased. No? So that means it will magnify. It will give a hint to the teacher or to the other students. Ah, many are amazed. No? And, and uh, that they feel today that they are very excited today and so on and so forth. So with that, there is student and teacher engagement. 
I think Ma'am Lisa or um, yeah, I think Ma'am Lisa can uh, oh, look at excited. So it also increases because I think there are other one, other learners uh, submitted also excited. I was saying that uh, Ma'am Lisa did a training last week or when was that? About student engagement, student to teacher. This is one way also that we can connect to our to our students. Why? Because if you know who's like, if one of you here, I'm feel sad. So maybe you can trace who that person is sad, and then you can refer it to your uh, counseling department and office. There are many ways really to engage our students in a gamification. So only few answered. Uh, anyway, we are only few in the class. I mean, in this meeting, how many are we? Um, let me check. We are, oh, there are 31. Great. And then amazing, excited. Um, for sure, many, many answered or perhaps uh, one answered um, excited to learn because the excited increases and the learn is small. So things like that. Um, Amazing, right? It's it's so wonderful to have like this. But the question is how? Um, how to do that poll everywhere, sir? Um, we will have a separate training into the specific skill uh, acquisition to poll everywhere in the future or in the next session. Just go to our uh, upscaling list for June and July. So this is an example. This is the first... This is before I will start my class, okay? And then immediately after that, oops. Uh, check, share, screen, okay? And then at the first quarter, like if one hour ako ang video session, uh, at when 15 minutes na, I use poll. If I use Zoom, I can use poll in the Zoom. If I use BBB, there is also poll in the big blue, in the big blue button. Diba? And I'm sure many of us, many of us also experience um, having the poll, just like this one. Can you answer this? Have you tried using Zoom poll during your live lecture? Yes or no? Yes. Oh, no. Oh, no is leading. <laughs> okay. Okay. So actually, this is also sometimes, this is one way of feedbacking and making sure that the students are engaged into your discussion. No? And then you will not proceed if not, if, if not all will, will reply. Or let's say, for example, what are the different parts of the... What are the different forms of muscle that I discussed a while ago? So something like that. And then you have the multiple choice there just to make sure that the students are there, just to make sure that the students are on this and they are not doing something else and they are listening to you. Okay, so that is... Um, I'm sharing the poll result now and many in our audience here... Uh, have not experienced using the Zoom poll. You can actually use that even the free version. Diba, ma'am? Who's this? Sir Fred, even the free version, we can, we can use, we can use a uh, poll. I think, uh, ma'am. Disable, yes, yeah, sir. Ito ang mga premium, sir. Okay, I see, I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, we can use the uh, big blue button, but for big blue button, I guess this is open, right? So, because big blue button is free. Okay. Then, after the first quarter, I can do something like in the middle of my, in the middle of my session, I can integrate whiteboard. Whiteboard sharing using Google Jamboard. So let's say, for example, I have a question on, on um, what do you think is the solution of this case? No, If there is a situation like this, so instead of asking that 
collectively to the student and then ask one student to answer for sure no one will answer and then they will make a drama that their mic is off or their video is not functioning no and even you will say oh just chat uh, mom the chat is having a problem also they're not interested to participate um, what i did is doing some whiteboard sharing like in the middle just to make sure that they are participating uh, i will well my, my class is uh, um, it so say for example which of the following analytics uh, which of the following analytics tool is most useful in this kind of problem so instead of you know asking them one by one i'll just share a one white screen and then all of them can input let me show this how jamboard how Jamboard will look like. Many are having brownouts now, but uh, that's fine. Um, let me go to Jamboard so that you can. I text Jamboard. I wanted you to click what I have texted. I mean, chatted. Uh, click on that link because that will lead you to Jamboard. And then I will do the sharing so that all of you can see your response. Okay, anyone who would want to, to type? Sir Fredly is here. Can you type Sir Fredly just to make sure? Okay, Sir Fredly is about to type. And then the admin, who else is here? Mamreya also has joined. I'm not sure if you can type. Maybe I... Okay, hello attendees, thank you. No, so questions like, uh, what do you think is the most popular uh, white sharing tool? Or just answer me, have you tried Jamboard before? Have you tried Jamboard before? Mm. Have you tried Jamboard before? Oh no, why? Uh, were you able to... Hi everyone. What about the others? I wanted you to try this. Uh, I'll tell you, students are more <laughs> excited to do, to, lo to do something like this. No, and then at the end you can even make uh, questions like, like uh, I wanted you to summarize. No, in in one word, summarize our discussion today. So something like that, and then students will put in there and so on and so forth. Okay, it's called white sharing. I mean whiteboard sharing. This is in Google, and. Because it is Google for Siliman, for our colleagues at Siliman, you can find it in your Google Drive. Um, I think, again, Mam Lisa again um, introduced uh, Jamboard um, to you and how you can utilize. And then you can actually integrate it in your live session. Okay, questions. I got a message here. Can we use Jamboard for offline activity? Yes, why not? No, why not? Uh, students, as long as you you did not restrict the time frame of your of, of the accessibility of the Jamboard, yes, you can. Students can actually access it anytime. Uh, you don't need to come in real time synchronously. But uh, you just have to you just have to do some instructions because when the students will post, uh, I think a classmate can erase. Let me let me check. I think I can erase this one. Oh no. Oh, that's good. Okay, I think I said this that uh, a student cannot erase the response of his or her classmate. Okay, that's good. So you can also do this uh, asynchronously. Delete sila ka in code ay na ah sorry na restrict daw is it true? Can't open it. Okay. Let me change my restriction. Oh, okay, sorry. Anyone with a link? 
Okay. Sige, for non-Salimanian, you can now access it. Sige, for non-Salimanian, I think you're okay now. You can try. Sir Mark, please try. Ma'am Fe. Hi, Ma'am Fe. Long time no see. How's Bohol now? Okay. Are you here na, Sir Mark? Anonymous. Okay, that's good. That's good. So something like that, you can you can do that, no? In my case, I normally when the students when the student post it, I I always tell them because sometimes it really it's really confusing. Like what you are doing right now, it's moving on my screen and <laughs> and you will not stop. What I usually do is I will say like this: in three in three minutes, I wanted you to input what you have learned so far. So I give them time. Ba pasagdaan ako na sila. And then later on, I will tell them to stop, and then I will discuss one by one. So I I will do something like, okay, this is very good. No, put a check mark, and uh, uh, and then you can do you can have all your discussions along the way so that for you to be able to continue, you don't need to have really like a fancy, uh, fancy um. Fancy uh, presentation and everything, but all you have to do is uh, just make sure that you can you can integrate your discussion while you are gamifying your delivery. Okay, so happy Father's Day to all daddies and to all um, forms of daddies here on on this webinar. Okay. Sige. So that is what we call Jamboard. So how to do that Jamboard thing? All you have to do is to just go to your Google Drive. Like in my case, uh, just go to your Google Drive. You can just Google Apps and look for Jamboard. I hope Jamboard is here. This is Jamboard. So for, for Selimanian, you can actually go to your Google Apps in Seoul and then so that it will be directly um, open. No? So it's Jamboard. It's a white sharing thing. Okay. That's good. Are we good so far? Okay pa? We have 10 o'clock. Sige. Then let me go back to my screen. We're still on Jamboard. And then what else here? Then uh, usually at the end of the session, what do you do in your class? Can we ask from the from our specialist in the education department, si Ma'am Atong Lantawon Aniron, ma off dining kuan aniron. Hopefully, dili ma leave. Si Sir Candido, Sir, what do you usually do? Like in the face-to-face, -face, at the end, before you will dismiss the class or ending your discussion, what do you normally do in your class? Any volunteer? Any volunteer? Siguro si Ma'am Donna? Can I be heard? Can oh, I sure. Be heard? Yes, we no. can hear you loud and clear. So again, sir, your question is what... My what, what do you I do? usually yeah usually do um ending the topic towards the end of your topic like uh um how do you end your class discussion mm -hmm. uh, as from i usually give as i, I summarize the whole the lesson then um i i, I summarize the whole lesson sir in yes. some cases i let the students do the summarization okay that's very About, good no yeah, that, mm. that's really the usual thing. And I also do that no? in the face-to-face -face, uh, before I end, you have to go back to your outline of the discussion. No? So we just, something like this, we just discuss the four types of muscles and so on and so forth. No? And then what have you learned? Anyone who would like to summarize uh, three sentences, things like that. But it's difficult to do that online. Diba? Because students again will say, my microphone is effective, my, I cannot do my video, and etc. etc. But what if you will do that in 
You will do that. You are going to synthesize. You are going to review using Kahoot. For sure, all of you or perhaps nakakita na what Kahoot means. So I'll stop my screen again and let's do the summarization. Tingnan natin kung nakikinig ba talaga. Exit tickets. That nice, Ma'am Iris. Hi, Ma'am Iris. No, um, long time no see. <laughs> okay, let me share the my Kahoot so that we can do our summary and for me to check if you are listening. Bitaw, I'm just kidding. Um, it, this is actually a ready-made one that I use in some of my training. And then this is my Kahooting. Let me open. I have to oops, log in. Block we tested. Hmm. Okay. Just hold on. Because I'm using another classic. Okay. Classic thing. And let me share this with you. This is my screen. Get ready with your phone. And I wanted you to go to... Hold on. I need to... I need to share the audio. Okay. Please go to www.kahoot.it and then input 223-9716. So let's say for example... Let's say for example, I am... I am now on my summarization. Okay, any questions so far? But uh, I just to test with you, if you learn from our discussion, get ready with your phone and let's do the game. Okay, hi Nick, hi Chong, hi Red. Let's try to, if others can join, I'm not sure if you have two gadgets there. But... Uh, um, let's check how many are we. We are 31. Okay, there are three who joined. Four, Sir Mark. Hi, again. Um, go to, again, the instruction is go to www.kahoot.it and then input 223-9716. There are many settings in Kahoot. It's either the questions will be shown on the mobile app or the questions will not be shown in the mobile app but the questions are only shown from the teacher point of view. In my case, I normally do that just to make sure that there is interaction, uh, there is an interaction with the students and myself being the teacher rather than interaction to the mobile phone. Okay, Madam K. Hi, Madam K. Hi, Sheila Ria, Dendom, Cookie. No, you can actually set a a nickname to that no but of course in my case because this is formative i sometimes give this because at the end of kahoot you can download excel sheets you can download excel sheets and the score and then ako na siyang i-input to my grade book no as part of their classroom participation because you can download so i always tell them to input their uh, uh, family name no otherwise they don't have score <laughs> and normally based on experience they will follow your instruction because they are after of scores no okay so to save time i will proceed uh ernie floor observe na lang. get ready and we will start the game okay never mind that one in three two one It is any type of learning that takes place in learning environments and spaces. Mobile learning, OCW, MOOC, gamification. 13 seconds. All you have to do is to tap there on your mobile app. Four answered. Five answered. It's time. Okay, the correct answer is mobile learning. <laughs> the correct answer is mobile learning, but what the students are interested with is they would be more interested how much score they have. And there is an AI to this uh, because time is part of the AI and then they have the large database, no? large database, and then you are also competing with the others. No? 
So something like that. Oh, red got is on the top. Chong, zero. Nick, Mark, and Iris, zero. So red is correct. Let's go to the next. True or false? Gamification is the application of game design elements and game principles in a game context. True or false? In 10 seconds. Bantay yung masayop ning soul, ani ba? Yay! Very good. There are nine who answered correctly, but four false. Let's check who got false. Bitaw. Okay. So, and the highest still red, followed by Sheila, Cookie, Mom, Faye, and then Nick got the score. Congratulations. And the next. It is an online course aimed at unlimited participation and open access via the web. Is it MOOC? Is it TPCKF? Is it OCW? Is it Learning 3.0? Okay, the correct answer is MOOCs. No, five answer MOOCs. One answered learning 3.0. And next. So this is the podium, assuming after 10, 7, 1. Okay. Cookie is on the third place, followed by Sheila on the second place. And the first place and the award goes to Jade Montima Red. Sorry. Sorry for <laughs> Red. No. And we have runners up, Chong and Mom Pe. What is good into this is you can show also the interaction. I mean, the movement and escalation. Like there are messages like the highest social climber, <laughs> the highest climber is blah blah blah. No, from 10th place up to up one, and so on and so forth. So this this makes your your summarization sentences rather than purely oral, and then students are bored after 50 minutes listening to you. Um, to your voice and etc. And then you have something like a a analytics into this, um, like like how many answered correctly and so on and so forth. Because this will help you also to improve your questions. You can you can click the view report view report here. Ah uh, no, I I I lock it. No, I lock it. So that is an example of um. Uh, gamifying your synchronous learning. Do you think it's uh, helpful? I'm sure some of you here uh, have experience also. They have their own experience in gamifying their class. Yes, sir. Hi, Ma'am Maria. Okay. Another example that we did, still during, uh, in, in, in a synchronous, Sir, I don't actually do live session. I do sing asynchronous, but still students are not uploading my or not downloading my slides. Um, uh, Nagaibags na ko, sir, for that pre-recorded video or that presentation, but no one actually downloaded or read it. So again, still on engagement. Students are not interested. No, Maybe it's not exciting. Grabe ka harsh. Anyway, so there are some ways. One is integrate interaction in your pre-recorded video using H5P. No, integrate a pre uh, integrate interaction. Meaning, in your pre-recorded video, uh, I normally do pre-recorded video. I don't do live lecture. I don't lecture on live because that's feel that's for me um, not effective. I pre-record, put it there. And then student can just access it anytime. But just to make sure there is interaction, uh, you can put H5P into that. No? Um, show example again. Let me go to my Soul account. And then log in. Using my account. Hold on. I'll go to my class. And let me check if I, oops, where is it? 
presentation slide. Oh no, I can't find it. Uh, hmm. I think it's in the other. In in my other, I'm opening my virtual classroom. Please hold on. Hmm. Oh, here. Okay, I should be able to see this and uh, you should be able to see this and show my screen. But this is my screen. So this is an example. It's, it's my pre-recorded uh, workshop. And then I inputted, I, I use H5P in a virtual class. And then, um, and uh, there, uh, H5P, by the way, is free. You can also use that even if you're not using a, I think you can, you can use H5P outside of your learning management system because uh, it's basically free. So you have a, a pre-recorded video and then you can input questions along the way into your video. Okay, it's, I made a wrong choice in my video because it takes somewhat uh, a longer time to open it. It's about two hours. Okay, here. So this is my video. Just uh, we, we did it. If you wish to view the, the, the recordings into this, if you can see the circle, here, these are some of the interactive interactivity component in the video. It's a pre-recorded video posted in it, and then uh, asynchronously students can just uh, view into it. But just to make sure that they are participating or there is interaction to the content, you can incorporate your video. So say for example, uh, the students now is about on this, this time we will focus other quadrant it is on the pedagogy it is on the pedagogical approaches with just 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 long learning independent and collaborative learning and it is actually called as a balance um pragmatism kind of pedagogical approach okay now when we talk about flexible learning Mm. Something like this, in, in the video, it will not go on to the next because you have some interaction. No? So the students can, the students can actually uh, just check it. So there is even like a, a hint, some tip, you can actually do that and then part of their learning. So let's say, for example, that one check, it's wrong. So I cannot still proceed. And then if I will choose another one, check learner still wrong and then learning management system check so i can now we know also continue. that online learning is only one this is actually emphasized okay. by the commission so Higher there Education is, that there when, is a separate training into that you can go again you can register uh, how to gamify our delivery and content using h5p um, there are two sessions for that because each 5P is a very comprehensive and powerful tool uh, for gamification. Okay, that is an example. Uh, that is an example of um, another one is the use of restriction and activity completion. I guess it was mentioned also by Mam Lisa. Use of restriction and activity completion. I'm sharing now my screen. And I will go to my classroom. I'll go to my classroom and demonstrate to you what it likes to be a share switch role student and then share my screen, screen one. Okay, so say for example, this one uh, uh, on session, session two. In my session two, Okay, so say for example, discussion forum, considering that blah, 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 but student cannot respond into the forum if they will not read this. So not available unless the activity is marked complete. So the students have to download, uh, I mean, have to read this one, at least click naman, no? 
uh, at least click and then read it and so on and so forth. And then you can set it to, to my soul. You can set your activity completion. At least I think it was emphasized also in the previous meeting, previous training. You can set the activity completion so that the system can mark it complete or not if the students are not performing that particular activity. So just imagine if the students have a quiz and then uh, I, I normally give some type of uh, formative assessment like uh, uh, um, a one week, my quiz is open for one week. No, my quiz is open, a uh, very short micro learning lang, like uh, five items, but that is open for one week. But students cannot take that quiz if they will not perform the previous activity. So say for example, this one, this quiz, they cannot take it unless activity one, ICT education is marked complete. So they have to, this one, they have to answer this, no? And so on and so forth. Um, like, like for this one, there is a condition for section two, they cannot open section two unless activity one discussion forum is marked complete. Meaning they cannot open section two if they will not participate in the forum, in the discussion forum. And it's very interesting. I guess also it, there was a mention that in my discussion forum so that students also can engage with their co-learners, you can set your classroom that the activity will not be complete if the students will not re respond or reply to the posting of their classmates. So you can do that actually. So it is called, it's a pair, a marriage of restrict and activity completion. Okay, so I hope you were able to get it because uh, uh, I was really able to experiment it and pilot it. And, and it is interesting to know that uh, students are, are excited or students are engaged in that kind of mechanism in your virtual classroom. Okay. Um, another example that we tried, incorporate alerting activities in your virtual classroom. You can do some, remember screen break, we have issues on screen break, etc. Students are very screen dependent and so on. It is actually called um, um, alerting activities in general. Before COVID, before screen break was popular, there is a so-called alerting activities. Um, just to emphasize also, there, if we know synchronous and asynchronous, there is also a new term now, bichronous. That means it is a combination of both, meaning during asynchronous time, there is synchronous time. Or the other way around, during synchronous time, there is asynchronous time. So just showing you on the screen, this is my actual class. So quiz two, coverage, blah, blah, blah. To get the release code of quiz two, do the instruction below. Before taking the quiz, do this. Perform five jumping jacks. Count your pulse rate. Submit the total count of your pulse rate here. Your release code to take quiz, quiz two will be shown after submission. So students really have to do that, no? Or I also tried go to the window and count how many people uh, passing by to your house. <laughs> Something like that. Just... Uh, this is actually in response to the screen break thing that students are so dependent and then their eyes are tired. You can actually, it's called alerting activities or we call that, we coined that here at Seoul Office as AFK activities or away from keyboard activities. No, So there are many that I, I, I tried also like... Uh, um, just to make sure that they are away from their computer, like get one fourth sheet of paper and draw a happy face and uh, scan or take a photo of it and submit to me just to make sure that uh, just to make sure that they are doing an activity away from their class. And I, I, and I did that like during quiz or some other some other activities. Okay, so I hope I'm giving you some some hint on how to do that. Another one is during assessment. No, so use of limits and attempts. It, it, this limits and attempts is very powerful thing also for students to learn. Remember in, in gamification, students should be able to, to have some liberty and to learn 
from time to time, especially for especially for formative formative assessment. Like in my case, uh, like for my quiz one, learners are given ten attempts to retake the quiz. The average score will be recorded. No, so ten items with a fifteen minute time limit. They can retake ten attempts, but only the average score. So students would be very careful in clicking all those because averaging. Another example, learners are given five attempts to retake. Still, the average score will be recorded, but limited time. Another example, uh, learners are given unlimited attempts. They can retake as many as they can, but I will only record the last attempt of their score. So things like that, no? And then uh, unlimited, but only within 15 minutes. So that's that's uh, the use of limits and attempts. Um, limit and attempt lang na siya, but that can be structural gamification. That can use the structure of your delivery in gamifying your classroom. Okay. Uh, another also is during in during assessment, use other type of questions like drug drug and drop uh, with feedback and hint. Uh, Sir Fredly uh, explained this to you. Um, the drug and drop, no, it's very helpful also sometimes for students, but uh, you have to be very clear in your instruction because this some are only workable via desktop, but not workable via phone and others. Okay, uh, the use of budgets and e-certificate. Um, we will be scheduling another upscaling for this on how you can how you can do budgets in your class. Let's say, for example, um, for those who can get three badges, I will give additional 50 points, so things like that after completing a particular task. So it's called badges and then even certificate, you can do a, an automated certificate via our MySoul for Siliman University. Okay, so gamification is a, is a summary, no? Uh, is the application of game-like mechanics to non-game entities to encourage a specific specific behavior. So when does it make sense to use to encourage a specific response or behavior, to encourage the visibility and perceived importance, to promote competition and to engage friendly competition, of course, and to engage students and to help students track their own progress no help students to track their own progress and i showed to you also some leaderboards no some examples like leaderboards mga letter grades and so on and so forth what gamification cannot do okay gamification is not game based learning nor does it require students to play games with toys use electronics or it uh, it also doesn't necessarily require you to create Elaborate systems of experience, um, points, unlocks, and budgets through you could. In other words, um, game-based learning is the second concept of class, uh, gamifying your classroom. I explained to you gamification, and I will explain later about uh, what is a game-based learning. Uh, before I will jump to game-based learning, just to show you that there are many ways to gamify our content, our delivery and assessment using H5P. So I showed to you the interactive content. It's in our MySoul. You can add this interactive video. You can make your course presentation, branching. You can do accordion, agamoto, arithmetic quiz. You also have dictation column, collage, um, even the chart, essay, fill in the blanks, and so on and so forth. And there are many more. Just uh, um, if you are interested, we have two sessions for this, uh, part one and part two, in gamifying your classroom using H5P. We cannot, we cannot deliver all of this, but uh, just we will just choose what is uh, most um, applicable and appropriate in your classroom. No, So just um, register to the training. Okay, now let me proceed to the second part, which is the game-based learning. Time check, 10.20. Okay, I hope uh, Sir Jade now is sending you your, 
your code, your admin detail, I mean your your registration, your username and password details. Okay, game-based learning define as learning that is facilitated by the use of a game. And it is designed to balance subject matter with gameplay and the ability of the player to retain and apply said subject matter to the real world. It describes an approach to teaching where students explore relevant aspect of games in a learning context designed by the teacher. So basically good, good game-based learning applications can draw us into a virtual environment that look and feel uh, familiar and relevant. And the, they should work towards a goal, choosing an action experience and, uh, and teachers and students collaborate to each other to add depth and perspective to the experience of playing. Um, about the game. Game-based learning uses games, whether physical or virtual. What I'm trying to say is game-based learning does not exist or did not exist because of COVID. Game-based learning was uh, existed a long time ago as part of educational technology. No, um, Before COVID, since I started research on educational technology way back 2011, we always introduce game-based learning gamification, but only few see the value on this thing. Okay, so game-based learning can take multiple forms uh, depending on the need actually of the classroom. And there are many types like board games, card games, word games, video games, simulations, uh, role-playing games, and puzzle. No? And... Uh, uh, some examples to this, flashcard, memory games, simulation games like uh, Plantville, uh, interactive, fun brain. There are many that you can use. A uh, quiz game, Kahoot, I'd I, I share that with you. The crossword puzzle, uh, Europa Universalis for, for the strategy game, reality testing game, and etc. Okay, some tips to gamify your classroom. Make your students as co-designers. Okay, make your students a co-designer. Allow second chances. And, and third, uh, remember the attempts that will help you also, that will help the students more engage um, your attempts, but you just have to make sure and be clear to them what score are to be recorded. No? Uh, provide instant feedback. Uh, Sir Fred Lee mentioned to you that it's better to have feedback in every item. No? Uh, because that will help the students be more engaged into our assessment. Make progress visible. In our virtual classroom, uh, if you can see, let me, if you notice, I'm not sure if, if you notice uh, your classroom. Okay, let me share my screen. If you notice something like this for Seliman, you will see progress 06. That's actually will give a hint to the student what they are missing. No, because I set my activity completion. All my resources and all my activities on my virtual classroom, I always set my activity completion because that will tell us and the students what are the missing activities or missing performance tasks that they need to do. Uh, many teachers have the problem of sila pa ang naglocate ano yung mga kulang ng mga estudyante. You don't need actually to do that only if you activated your activity completion. That will give the progress sometimes like a daily progress uh, report of our students. Okay? Um, I hope everyone now is having the username and password so that uh we can do so make progress visible create challenges or quests give students voice and choice not necessarily literally they can speak but give them an avenue for them to participate even if they don't even if they will not do it orally because you know let's accept the fact that students are some students are not good in in oral recitation, but they are good in participating. Again, depending on the learning outcome that you wish to be achieved in your class. Offer individual budgets and rewards. Have students design an achievement system 
of course, the ed, uh, educational technology thing, we should know, we should have all those skills, not just simply literacy, but we can create, we can manipulate, and we can redesign our own uh, structure and content gamification. Uh, embrace failure, emphasize practice. So gamification, after all, is used to increase interaction, uh, enthusiasm, and participation in our delivery content and perhaps later on into the assessment. I would like to ask everyone if you have questions and uh, before I will go to the last part of our webinar here. Anyone who would like to ask? Sir, good morning yes. again. Good morning, yes. In 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 the place where I am teaching, we have a limited signal. So as for me, I'm using only text uh, in the messenger. So whenever I have a class, I I check on it. Like, uh, I do you understand like that? Then I have to wait for the reply and I replied back. Is that part of gamification? Yeah, the, the, it, it, it really depends, sir. If you just remember there are two there are two types is either structural and content pwede mm. naman there is a little but i think you have to 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 enhance it so say um, for yeah you have to enhance mm. it like instead of just simply using the messenger uh add the game part there because the messenger is a chat communication there is no uh, there's no interesting game part there. So perhaps you can use Messenger, but instead of asking the question, replying via Messenger, you will say, uh, how are you doing today? Uh, answer this via Kahoot. Still, you are using Messenger. Did you get what I mean, sir, Candido? Or... Uh, if you don't want to use another another tool, um, instead of just saying instead of just saying, uh, um, did you understand? Perhaps you can do some multiple choice in the way you chat, so something like that. So that can be, but uh, we we have to emphasize again on not just simply on the learning component, but the gamification. Remember the box I shared. Uh, that there should be, let me go back to my, to my, remember the box I shared that in the, in the gamification, in the gamification concept, there should be a portion of the game component, not just simply on the, on the learning. This is the one, no? So if maybe if we just use messenger and ask them, how are you feeling today? Or uh, what have you learned? That is only the goal, the learning, the skill, and the achievement. But maybe we miss having the, the challenge part. Where is the challenge part there in that chat messenger? Uh, where is the reward part there? Where is the competition part there? Okay. So maybe you can add the first 10 students who can reply immediately uh, will get an additional one point. For those who can reply with more, at least uh, 10 words, I will give uh, two points, things like that. Okay. I hope you got what I mean, sir. Other questions from the audience? Hello, sir. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. Okay, thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Other questions? Anyone who would like to ask? Walay question. Sige. Um, ako na lang siguro, no? Based on what are the challenges that we encounter? The challenges really is, number one is you need you need technical skill. You need the skill of those tools. You need the skill how to make Kahoot. You, you have to have the skill of all those gamification tool or game-based learning tool that you should do. 
the easiest one is actually the gamification, not the game base. Because for game base, you need some expert. You need to do some a little bit programming for you to be able to to gamify your your content or your classroom. So that's one. That's the first Miss Universe uh, Miss Universe challenge. You need to have the skill. That is why we have to upskill. We have to learn. Uh, now that we are good enough in managing our learning management system in our MySoul, we have to elevate, incorporate, incorporate more, more complex uh, teaching pedagogy like a gamification. Okay, sige. So if there is no question, we will go to our next part of the session which is we wanted you to experience a game-based learning. Uh, at Siliman, we are promoting whole person, whole person education. And uh, I teach, uh, we have an initiative before at the university that uh, uh, administrators and, and chosen faculty who can articulate, chosen teachers who can articulate the whole person education at Siliman can teach. I am one of those pioneering. Uh, faculty uh, who teaches a whole person education. And one of the observation I did is uh, students find it so boring, the discussions about whole person education might be too boring to them, especially that they find it too difficult to, to appreciate for the moment in relation to their course or to their degree program. So we thought of, we thought of uh, developing a game-based application, which is all about teaching or educating students about, about the whole person education at Seliman. And this will also measure how far they have learned or how far they are familiar or learn about Seliman University. Okay, so get ready with your phone. I think the, the minimum requirement is Android. Uh, for now, the the tool the tool that we develop is uh, can run can run via Android application. Sorry for the iOS. There is really digital divide. You know? Sorry for the for those iOS users. But uh, uh, for now, we want we want only those Android. And you should have at least your phone should have a specification of. 10, I think, Sir Jade, 10, tama, no? So 10. Yes, sir, Android 10. Oh, yeah, Android 10. And uh, let me share my screen. Okay. So let's play and learn using the Siliman University whole person education mobile app. So what is this? It is an educational game-based application about whole person education at Siliman University. It is a learning trail. It is supposedly designed for a face-to-face -face because uh, this is also one way like uh, you can visit the different places at the university with the use of a QR code. Oh, you, you, you need not to worry. You don't need to download QR code because that's already embedded in the application. So it's a learning trail. You are supposed to go to Seliman campus and experience Seliman. Seliman uh, uh, you, you will experience the campus at Seliman because this is supposedly to be done on campus. But we are trying to, to tweak this into a virtual way as part of our... Uh, uh, as part of our deliverable with the funding agency. So it talks about the classroom, the church, the cultural center, the court, the community, you know, uh, the whole person education at Siliman with the five Cs, classroom, uh, church, cultural center, court, and the uh, community. It is mobile-based with QR code recognition and can run on Android phones and tablet, okay? Um, Sir Jade gave you actually the the what is this the your user details. But before that, before you will download, um, let me illustrate to you first on how to go with this. Okay, this is actually the the steps. After downloading, you will see the main page there, and you will see a button play. All you have to do is to click the play, and then immediately after that you have to find for the button confirm confidentiality and participant consent. 
sorry for the typo, uh, participant consent. So um, rest assured that uh, we follow data privacy protocol here, data privacy and security protocol here. And uh, after that, you need to scan using your phone, using the app, the downloaded app, there will be three checkpoints. We call it uh, identifier. Uh, checkpoint one, checkpoint two, and then checkpoint three. Using your phone, no, using your phone, you will you have to uh, point your phone to the QR code, and then it will read, no, and then there will be series of questions, and then during that, uh, from the three questions, the score, your score will appear, and your score will determine your score will determine which learning path uh, you have to follow. Learning path one, learning path two, and the learning path three. No, So, pili ka because even if you are learning one and then you will scan to learning three, it will not work. So, just uh, be honest with yourself. And then, um, all you have to do is to scan from checkpoint one to checkpoint ten. No? You will have to check point one and then uh, choose the correct answer. If you press a wrong answer, you cannot actually proceed to the next until you will get the correct answer. It's one way of educating also. And then up to the last, uh, sorry, it should be uh, the last checkpoint is common to all, which I will explain also later. There will be a 10. Uh, different questions and then there will be one QR code as ender to end the game which I will also uh, show later and then it will give you a final score and then after ending the game make sure to do evaluation our intention is uh, we wanted to improve the app uh, please uh, evaluate the app so that we can do some revisions in our next uh, in our next iteration, okay? Now, uh, you will go to this site. I will type this on the chat box. Uh, yeah, go this to the chat box. Yes, you cannot use your desktop and you cannot use iOS. It's only available for mobile phone, tablet, smartphone using Android. Um, wala pa tayong iOS, no? So I wanted you to click that. Clicking that link, let me demonstrate to you. Okay, this will appear. Okay, all you have to do is to scan there are three uh, three questions first. Make sure to start with one. All you have to do is to just click the arrow left, arrow right for uh, one, two, and three. So uh, get your phone and then point on the screen the QR code. If you're done, uh, when you get the correct answer, and then scan again for two second question and then third question. And then immediately after that, you will see an instruction of which learning path you are going. So if you are learning path one, just answer this. Make sure that you will start at one. It's all. This will always start at one. And then followed by two, and then three. And then if you are path two, you are into the green. And then path three, you are into the red. If you are done with the 10 QR codes, if you are done with the 10 checkpoints of your respective learning path, go back to Zoom main screen for the final for the final checkpoint for the final checkpoint that uh, um, we prepared for you so the final checkpoint is shown on the screen so let me share um, let me share again my screen to do the final instruction. Oops, view. Okay, sharing final 
Okay, so after going to this one, this is the final checkpoint that I uh, I mentioned to you. If all done, then this is the final question for you to be able to get the point to end the game. Okay, so I want you to download. Sir Jade, can you type to everyone the link where they can download the app? There is a new update. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, let me check. I think you you messaged that. Uh, I'll just give the link to the folder, sir. Okay, I think the actual link to the app is not working. Okay. Okay. So this is the link of the folder. So basically, it's a Google Drive folder. And uh, it's a link to a folder. So inside the folder, there's an application and then you need to download the application. Okay. Okay, so please uh, do that. I hope you can do that and let us know if you have challenges in accessing into it. download the app um yeah i'm sorry this time you need to use your your mobile uh, devices your phones or your tablets please give us a thumbs up if you were able to download the app We'll give you some time to download it. So after downloading, make sure to go to this one after denied access jade maybe this is not can you can you edit the restriction to all to anyone instead of siliman So while others are, are downloading that, let me read a question here. Is there an upskilling session about recording extra points that students achieve during gamification? Um, Sir Fred Lee, do we have, maybe this is incorporated in. Unsung uh, question, sir. Uh, is there an upscaling session about recording extra points or giving extra points to students who achieve during gamification or maybe limitations or restrictions? Uh, giving an extra credits. Uh, yep. Uh, so, I appeal up sa mong upscaling, sir. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, we have that. We have not uh, offered that so far, but uh, we will include that perhaps in the gamifying topic how do we do that in the grade book since the grade book has been set prior to the provision of the different learning activities what you can do ma'am is you will create the grade book grade book like create an a quiz or an activity to that assignment or let's say for example like in my case kahoot you can download actually and then at my soul i will create a quiz and then there's no question. <laughs> uh, you can just actually set one question, of course. Set one question and then the student will not answer it. I will just automatically input their score. Delete siya automatic na from Kahoot to your system. Okay, but I think for H5P, 
it can be recorded directly to the grade book. Tama, Sir Jade and Sir Fredly? For the current H5P, sir, yes. Okay, good. Yes. So directly it can be recorded to the grade book. That's for you, ma'am. Kinatak and kumusta ma? Ma'am, download sa WPE. Try that one. Done installing. Thank you, Minerva. Looking forward to that particular. Yes, ma'am. Uh, there is a session into that. Ato nang ipaside. Ipaside. Uh, uh, we will add that. I think gamification one and two. Okay. So at least nanay naka-install. If uh, you were able to install for those nga naka-install, please go to this. The link that I uh, that one, and then you can start again. All you have to do is to click play, click play. This is actually the the process. Click play, and then confirm. Then go to the website, uh, scan, and then scan the checkpoint. One, two, three, and then. Uh, please interact with the mobile app. I'll, I'll give some music. Um, stop the share. I'll find some audio here. While showing the...
the QR codes are found on the website. Uh, the one that uh, shared by Sir Fredly. Those are the different uh, QR codes there. Let us know if uh, you were able to download it. Okay, so far only one played. <laughs> Installed successful and about to play. Thank you, Ma'am Sheila. Uh, please go to the website. After the loading, go to davemarshall.net.su uh, slash su dash wpehtml. And then we'll see. And there should be three first, three QR codes as your qualifier. And then just make sure to just click on the button to go to the next. What I meant with one, let me share my screen so that you can answer it. But I think many get the answer so i mean playing i have to show my slides so that you can see the final qr code that is oops sorry that's the final checkpoint
I hope others can also um, perform or participate in the play, I mean in the game. So this one, this is basically a, a little bit, uh, there is a need of specialized skill because you have to program this. Yeah, thank you for the four players who successfully uh, playing the game. Uh, four players. So perhaps to save the time or maybe five more minutes to give five more minutes for those who participated. So like this, uh, how we can integrate this, you don't need to be real time actually, because you can create a web page for that. Um, for Silliman, we can actually incorporate it into our MySoul. For this time, it's we try to have this that accessible to all. Uh, but uh, for Silliman, we can integrate it into, into our virtual classroom by using Lightbox uh, image for our QR code. And then uh, we can we can um, incorporate all the scoring and like uh, do some conditions. If their learning path is two, then you can um, uh, scan this and so on and so forth. No, we are hoping that we can do this in face to face because uh, we we designed this into a face to face so that you can go to the trail, go to the campus, go to this building, and then find for the QR code. It's like amazing race type of a game. Okay, so that's, this is the final checkpoint. I hope, uh, someone asked me how I did my background that I can move myself on to my background. In Zoom, there is now advanced. You can use advanced and use slide as a virtual background. So while others are playing, um, please uh, don't hesitate to ask questions. Um, put it in the chat box and then we can discuss. And hopefully if anyone Okay. Uh, there are still some who are still in the qualifying checkpoints. No. So you can actually monitor um, your That's fine, Sir Jason, no problem, no problem. No problem, no problem, sir. Not working on QR code. Uh, maybe you were able to scan it in double because we have one successful player. You just make sure to move forward your QR code or you are in the correct path. the QR codes are actually working.
just choose one path, not that you will transfer from one path to another. So, like if you are path two, one lang ng visible diha, but there are ten. Just make sure to click the next, the forward and the next button and the backward button. Just to make sure if you were able to scan and then the checkpoint already completed, all you have to do is to click the next button so that it will go to the next QR code. Thank you, Sir Jason. Please go ahead.
Thank you for those who are who completed the game, and uh, for those who are not yet done completing completing the game, uh, please continue. Anyway, um, we can you can continue doing that actually, no, for the purposes of time. I think others are are challenged in downloading downloading the site or downloading the app, and hopefully you will continue that uh, testing. Testing the testing the app. Okay. So we will be monitoring those who take, and then we will be, we will be sending T-shirt for those who are who completed the game, you know, the the fastest, and who got the highest score, and at the same time fastest because part of the game challenge is you should be able to answer the mechanics actually of the game is while there is repetition and limited attempts. Um, the scoring only the first attempt is being recorded so your time will only count immediately after you click next and then you got the perfect you got the correct answer no so this is our t-shirt of the that we will be sending for the winner oops i hope we can show this anyway paki mine <laughs> no, I will stop my scaring. <laughs> and then how to do the stop share? I see. With no background. And none. Okay. And this is my office. Okay. And this is the t shirt we'll be sending to the winner of this uh, game. Okay, so that's gamification. If you have questions, I hope you can share that to the chat box or you can raise your hand if you would like to ask questions before we will end our discussion this morning. Okay, if none, uh, Steve, can you show the the slides for announcement? Okay, announcement. And uh, if you wish to go to the next, uh, can we have a, a photo opportunity for those who can switch on their video? Can you? Switch on your video camera for the photo opportunity. Okay, hi, Mom LV. Okay, and then kindly stop the video so that all screen, I mean, uh, screen sharing. Steve, can you stop the sharing and then please take in gallery. I think how many pages we have. Um, okay, Steve. Two, two pages, sir. Okay. Sige, smile for three seconds or five okay. seconds. One, One two, two, three, smile. Okay, next. Okay. One, two, three, smile. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. And Steve, the screen, if you wish to know more of the upscaling activities that um, we conducted, Paki, share the screen so that they can view the link. Okay, the post webinar survey, uh, tinyurl.com soul dash train eval 0618 um you can um 
please type it in the chat box. Kindly type on the chat box the link so that um, our your certificate your certificate will be sent uh, in two weeks time. Okay, in two weeks time. And if you wish to know more or if you wish to get an automatic uh, notifications of our video recording please subscribe uh, at http www.youtube.com slash soul okay a c slash soul and then once you are on youtube page don't forget to click subscribe and you will receive um, recordings because not all Upscaling activities are open to the public. Some are exclusive for Siliman University community. Okay. And thank you for attending. Bye-bye, everyone. Yeah.